Hello and welcome to our presentation on Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea by Dr. Ignacio Skoll and Dr. Ignacio Skoll. This is going to be a brief tutorial about Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. Clostridium difficile is a bacteria which causes antibiotic associated diarrhea or antimicrobial associated diarrhea. So after you use antimicrobials or antibiotics like azithromycin or other antibiotics, some people will have diarrhea and other symptoms ranging from simple diarrhea to colitis which is called antibiotic associated diarrhea and which is caused mostly by clostridium difficile so let's go so we will study today introduction to clostridium difficile associated diarrhea the pathogenesis the clinical features the investigation and the treatment Clostridium difficile is the most commonly diagnosed cause of antibiotic associated diarrhea. This is manifestation ranged from diarrhea to life threatening pseudomembranous colitis. The pathogenesis is that Clostridium difficile can produce two types of toxin, toxin A and toxin B. Clostridium difficile infection is usually as follows the antimicrobial therapy, that is, therapy by antibiotics like azithromycin, and this will alter the composition of the gastrointestinal flora. That means the gastrointestinal flora or the bacteria present in the large bowel will die and will be will be instead replaced by the toxicity Clostridium difficile and then the combination of toxin production and the ability to produce environmentally stable spores account for the clinical feces and transmissibility of the Clostridium difficile. So what happens is that when you take antibiotics like azithromycin or even penicillin, there will be disruption of the normal mic microbiota, the normal bacteria in the last bowel will die and Clostridium difficile will colonize the epithelium of the last bowel and they will release the Clostridium difficile, will release toxin A and toxin B which will cause the recruitment of the monocytes and neutrophils, the cells of inflammation, so acute inflammation will occur. And Clostridium will also build the pseudomembrane and there will be inflammation, there will be collection of dead cells and the Clostridium difficile will release its spores in the stools and will proliferate. So what are the clinical features? Normally they occur, the Clostridium difficile is diarrhea occurs in 80% of the cases occur in people over 65 years old, oldest people, many of whom are frail with comorbid disease. Symptoms usually begin in the first week of antibiotic therapy but can occur at any time up to 6 weeks after treatment has finished. So first 1 week to 6 weeks after the antibiotic therapy, the onset is often insidious with lower abdominal pain and diarrhea. The diarrhea is, will become profuse and watery. The presentation may pre resemble acute ulcerative colitis, so it can resemble ulcerative colitis because they will be bloody diarrhea, fever and even toxic dilatation and perforation. So the symptoms can range from profuse watery diarrhea to bloody diarrhea with fever and toxic dilatation and perforation of the colon. So the symptoms can be very severe and in pseudomembranous colitis, the severest form of the disease ileus is seen. This is the old man will take antibiotics. Over six people over 65 will take antibiotics and will suffer the diarrhea. It ranging from watery diarrhea to bloody diarrhea with fever, toxic dilatation, and perforation of the bowel. So let's see what sort of investigations can we do. One can we can do stool culture. We can also detect toxins A or B in the stool. Or we can also detect glutamate dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme produced by Clostridium difficile, or we can detect the Clostridium difficile nucleic acid by PCR. Clostridium difficile toxin ELISA can be done, or a tissue called a cytotoxin can be done. The rectal appearance, so we can also do sigmoidoscopy, that is, we can insert the sigmoidoscope through the rectum and we can see characteristic feature ranging from erythema, white plaque, or an adherent pseudomembrane. We can also see pseudomembrane, we may see white plaque or erythema. So this is the picture of a colon uh, when we do colonoscopy in place of Clostridium difficile infection we can see numerous adherent pseudomembranes in the mucosa. these white patches are the pseudomembranes. So what is the treatment for this Clostridium difficile acid diarrhea or the antibiotic acid diarrhea? One is the precipitating antibiotics should be stopped and the patient should be isolated. Supportive treatment are usually IV fluids and bowel rest. And first line antimicrobial therapy involves metronidazole, 500 mg metronidazole orally 3 times daily for 10 days, or vancomycin, 125 mg orally 4 times daily for 7 to 10 days. Since there is a high risk of causing a microbial resistance with this vancomycin, it is only used in severe cases. 
and my vancomycin is also more expensive than metronidazole so vancomycin is less preferable because it can cause microbial resistance and is expensive another drug is fidaxomycin which is similar to vancomycin but it's more expensive so intravenous immunoglobulin IVIG and the glucocorticoids are sometimes given in the most severe or refractory cases Fecal transplantation from a healthy donor can be done. This is the fecal transplantation. This is the pills which contain fecal material and the fecal microbiota. This, re this restores the normal microbiota of the bowel. Thank you. Please subscribe to Ignatius School for more videos.